We are here with one of my favorite fighters of all time, the Camden Buzzsaw, uh, Dwight Muhammad Kawi. Mr. Kawi, how are you? I'm very good, very good. I'm living, I'm breathing above ground, and I'm, you know, man, to see, you know, the love from the people man, and the guys who, you know, give boxing this credit do. You know, I mean? it's, a, it's a science. <laughs> a lot of people have eggheads with this dispute that, but it is, man, you know, and the only way to find out is get in the ring. No, it's good. But, yeah, it's a sweet science. You seem to be in good spirits, and one of the reasons I always love watching, going back and watching your old fights, you seem to be having a good time in the ring. You always had this this grin on your face. Yes. Were you happy to be in there, or was your mouth guard too big? <laughs> no, well, well um, I really, I love, I love the sport. You know, as far as um, what it represented, a livelihood. You know, that's real uh, livelihood. Uh, you know, and um, it did a lot for me as a person to accomplish something to do my, for my esteem. And there's an old saying, when you're hungry, you get out. When I mean, you're not hungry, rather, you get out of the game. And I didn't even know what it was. I just knew it was a drive. But I was hungry, man. I wanted, I wanted it. I wanted it bad. And that's why I ate, slept boxing, man. And then when that went, politically, whatever was the reason, that's what happened. You know what I mean? You could see me fall off. But when I was hungry, man, I mean, I could probably gave my best fight, especially the ESPN tournament you just talked about. Man, they, that was my opportunity. I'm, I never had an amateur fight. I'm a street kid. They said, look, see that, bring that tough guy there and, and, me, match, and match him up with Smite over on the other side of the country. And, man, I said, this is it for me. And sure enough, and I got a network fight with Mike Rossman. The rest is history. I always wanted to ask, what was it like, and you, the fight before you won the world title the first time against James Scott, fighting in the prison, basically, in front of the prisoners? I mean, that's like everything coming full circle for you in one fight. Yeah. Um, me and James, we had a little tension, stress, a little animosity. You know what I mean? Nothing, nothing, um extreme but you know just you know rivalry rivalry stuff like you know what i mean i went sparring him once you know he he didn't pay me you know what i mean kind of like you know but he could i mean he, i don't think he meant it but i used that to get me up for the fight and i said that's okay i'm gonna take it out of your you're gonna read in the rest <laughs> so it was something you know we, we built up me and him and and going in there just let him know and kids outside know that you know that don't make you bad you know what i mean that don't make you successful you know what i mean it's hard work you know and believing in yourself so i had that kind of attitude too you know about it and obviously in the in the very next fight what most people would remember you for the the wars with matthew saad muhammad who of course uh, passed away uh, just a couple of days ago what kind of relationship did you guys have after that fight and it was a tough for you hearing of his passing and 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 now being here where he was inducted as well well I wish I hadn't fought Matt. I really do. Wow. Because when I fought Matt, I was hungry. I was very hungry. And, um, you know, that kind of, you know, you can't, it's just from within. I remember that when 1981 was a cold year. Cold year, man. I would breathe, you know, a steam come up. And I had to go run early in the morning, and I did it like it was nothing. And I trained hard in that snow, and I was struggling. I was up and coming. I wanted it so bad. And you saw it. And then at the rematch, I was on the top of my game. And then when I got to speech, right, I was kind of lax. You know, I wasn't as hungry. Not that I didn't win the fight, I thought, but I didn't go with the same time, kind of tenacity. You know, and plus I had a DVA septum. I'm not making excuses, but I wasn't as hungry. That's the main thing, I wasn't as hungry. And, um, and he caught me at that time, you know, and I would be King Kong. <laughs> that's what I felt, you know, and that's how I trained. But, uh, you know, hindsight is always 20, 20 yes. I was gonna, you know, you were one of the, the pioneers uh, of the cruiserweight division. And, and people always talk about now how maybe they should have maybe a super middleweight or super heavyweight division to kind of separate yes. those fighters. You you were one of the guys that made that jump from cruiserweight then to heavyweight. Do you yeah, think I, they should I, do that? I never, yes, I never understood why that they had that big difference in weight. One, one, 175 to 200, right? right. You know, you, you, a guy could be 230 and you're over 175, you're heavyweight. Right. So you had to fight them, right? And and you had a big weight advantage and big, you know. And they were athletes; they wasn't all fat or nothing like that. So, you know, there was a, a big difference. And so when they made it, they made it just for me. I grew that too. <laughs> you know, so I went to heavyweight, but um, yeah, I think it's long overdue with the heavyweights, the big, big heavyweights. And 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 you see the guys that um just held the titles; they wouldn't have that much talent. They just they use what they had. They use they taught them how to use with their size and their strength, and 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 they won, and they held it for a long time. Yeah. 
And uh, I wanted to ask you lastly about your style is something that we don't see too much of in the world of boxing. The pressure fighters that we see today, and you know, I don't want to be one of those guys that says, oh, they made them better back in the day, but we don't see guys that move forward with your kind of head movement and whatnot. Why you do know, you think that is? My third fight. My first fight was a draw. My second fight was a win. My last fight was a, my last fight was a loss. And I win one that they, they everybody said, but it was against a guy named Johnny Davis who I came back and beat twice. And he was very fast. And, and after the fight, I came back on the train from New York with my, with my um, manager and trainer. I said, man, this is a hard way to make a living. If I'm going to continue this, and I had knots all on top of me, I said, I got to learn defense. And he, he took me to school, taught me defense, and he taught, and, um, you know, that became like my model, you know, hard to hit and hit hard. You know, you couldn't hit me. I mean, and, you know, I had a, I had a, I had a style like a boxer that would come in and making you miss and make you pay, you know? Getting angles, the same way they would do a slugging, so I would do it to them. But I would out jab them. People didn't understand how I did that. I out jab I'm not gonna give up the secret even that nothing. <laughs> but you know, I would out jab them, and that's what's the key. I took that jab from them. If you watch it, even with Scott, I took the jab. I only had one hand. I had first size in my right arm when I fought him. And I beat him with the left hand. I didn't let the right hand go till the end of the fight because I, I was felt like it was gonna be too much pain. And, and I just had a heck of a job. I didn't even understand how good it was until after my career was over. But that's what kept the pressure off. And I learned a long time ago, they said the best defense is the good offense. You know what I mean? You just can't come in and take everybody. You like Joe Frazier? Joe Frazier? Yes, you know, I'm short like him, upper body movement. But I didn't take no punches. Words to live by. <laughs> Mr. Kawi, thank you so much.